Hey everyone, a uh, bit of a different video than I expected to make this week. I did plan on basically doing a test with my Evo Star Refractor with a with a um, stop down ring to see if it improved planetary images, but it's just been cloudy every single night here in England. So um, during the week though, Celestron launched their new Origin Mark II and that changes and upgrades the camera quite considerably. So I just want to talk in depth about the, the specs of that camera and what difference that will make to Origin users. Quickly, for anyone who doesn't know what a smart telescope is, it's a very techy telescope. You don't look for an eyepiece. It's got Wi-Fi built in that connects to your phone and it uses an app to live stack images together to build up a really detailed color picture that otherwise your eyes wouldn't be able to see looking for an eyepiece because our eyes aren't very sensitive in the dark compared to a camera taking longer exposures and many exposures. So yeah, this enables you to see lots of detail and deep sky objects without having a full on astrophotography rig with cables and getting to know each bit of software. That's part of the hobby for a lot of people, putting together a conventional imaging rig. But for a lot of people, especially if things like outreach and beginners, this kind of device allows them to see colour and detail in objects without that learning curve. And there are different price points. And admittedly, this is one of the most, if not the most expensive one, but it's a very, very good one right up there, giving very, very, very good results. And especially now, I should imagine, they've upgraded the sensor. Before I go anywhere with this, though, I did notice I might need to, or someone else can get in touch as well, but I've noticed they've got the arc second resolution for the old Origin, 1.48 arc seconds, and the new arc second resolution, it's increased to 1.2 arc seconds, so you've got finer detail with the newer sensor. So I want to jump in and compare that newer sensor. So this is chat GPT, admittedly, but we have got references for all this information and it's all really reputable places um, and I can't see any errors with it so let me know if there are any errors with it but I've got no reason clicking on a few of them checking it that I think this is all fine information for comparison so the first thing you first thing I'll say is when they when I first heard about the original origin and they said they were sticking the 178 sensor in I was thinking that's quite an old sensor it's like 2016 and the original origin was only like a year or two back. So, you know, even then it was getting on for like, what, eight years old. And I was thinking it's a really good sensor, but it's an old sensor. And then I was thinking, well, the, the Rasser optics of the origin are so fast. They suck in so many photons at F2.2 that, you know, it's going to work with, a, you know, even weaker sensors, it's going to work pretty well. But this new sensor is much newer. It, it was launched in 2022. It's the same series as well. Basically, the one's been swapped with a six. So instead of a one, seven, eight, we've now got the six, seven, eight. So it gives us nearly two more megapixels or megapixels. It's easier to say um, when you're a bit short tongued like I am. So the old camera is 6.4 megapixels and the new camera is 8.3. So a bit of a boost there. And we can see that the, the, the pixels themselves are finer now. They're two microns and they used to be 2.4. So that's going to give us that boost from 1.48 arc seconds down to 1.23. And I'll get on to that a bit more in a moment. But the there are some downsides to the actual new sensor, but I'll tell you why that doesn't matter. So we've actually lost um, dynamic range. We've gone from 14 bits to 12 bits. And... This, that's the number of, um, that basically depicts the amount of colours and shades you can see. And uh, I'll tell you why that doesn't matter. If we go onto this photo website here where someone's compared 14-bit to 12-bit raw files, daytime images though, admittedly, they've stretched quite a lot of these images. They could, they really struggle to find a difference. And in some cases, the 12-bit look better than the 14-bit and vice versa. And the reason is that there's not much difference that you can see with the human eye is because even 12-bit has an enormous amount of shades you can see. So 12-bit is 2 to the power of 12, which is 4096. And then you've got to take into account the, the red, green and blue channels. So that means you've got to cube that 4096. 4096 
4096 cubed is a massive 68 billion different shades and colors combinations and not simply put our human eyes can't see that many so it's not surprising that there's not much difference visible to the human eye between 12 bit and 14 bit although a lot of people would probably swear 14 bit is better and on paper it is it gives you four trillion shades and colors variations quite a lot isn't it personally i think anything above you know 8 bit to 10 bit and 12 bit you can see a difference by the time you get to 14 bit we're getting beyond what our eye can really differentiate and that's what i just wanted to point out now i plug these cameras the old camera and the new camera into astronomy tools it lets you see the field of view of second resolution we can see with the new camera we've got 1.23 a boost from 1.48 this is yeah I've, I've selected the moon because it's just a really good reference point so people can see the the field of view compared to an object in the sky they can easily see so as you can see you can frame the full field of you can, you can frame the full moon but the thing i wanted to point out is the old sensor is a little bit more square and the new sensor is 16 by 9 like your phone so you're not wasting any megapixels megapixels at all so it's a better fit the new sensor is a better fit so in short the going from the old sensor to the new sensor we're going from a really good image quality to an even better image quality because now we've got more megapixels we've got a better fit for the screens on our phones and tablets and um, we've got much lower read noise so the the noise isn't going to be buried the read noise is much lower 0.6 compared to 2.2 so the read noise now is much lower so the read noise is the the noise that's on the sensor pretty much all the time even on like short exposures and fine details can get buried in that noise and you'd have more noise on the old sensor than the new so the new sensor isn't going to bury as much fine detail perfect for short exposure smart telescopes having low read noise so i'm expecting to see better resolution low read noise means we're going to see finer detail i don't think you'll see the difference between 14 bit and 12 bit because our eyes just aren't sensitive enough We've got a slight boost in quantum efficiency from 81 to 83 percent and that's basically how many photons get used towards the final image the we, we dropped the amount of frames per second but that's mainly important for planetary imaging and that's just not a smart telescope's forte it just a smart telescope just doesn't have enough focal length to zoom you in close to small objects like the planet so that's of no consequence so the main takeaway is that it's a much newer sensor finer resolution uh, more megapixels um, and the it's got much lower read noise i think maybe the lower read noise is the most important aspect really because we'll be able to see finer details that aren't hidden in that noise so that's what difference I expect to see between the Origin original, the Origin 1, and now the new, newly released Origin 2. Celestron just need to update their uh, 1.48 arc seconds to 1.23. So, right, yeah. So the thing, that, the thing that got me onto this is I saw a video on YouTube where they were installing a, a, the new camera on an old Origin to make it into a Mark II. And I was like excited thinking, oh yeah, these will be in the retailers in the UK where I am and be able to buy it. I think that's only going to be in the US though. I think you have to contact uh, Celestron to find out about upgrading your existing Origin to an Origin 2. You can't, I don't think you're going to be able to buy the camera from UK retailers. So that's something to bear in mind. And that's all I can say on the matter. So I can't say any more. So with that being said, I just want to thank my channel members and my Patreons for the support they give the channel. Thank you very much. And uh, sorry I couldn't give you any sort of outside under the stars video this week. It's just absolutely chock-a-block with cloud. I really want to do this test with the aperture ring to see what effect it has reducing the aperture of my 120mm refractor down to a 90mm. Let's see if that cleans up the image a bit. Um, but I'll get to that when I can. Cool. Hopefully on the next video. But okay. Thanks very much. And I'll catch you soon. Bye for now and take care. Bye bye.